This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we study thy word, give us wisdom and we'll give God the praise in Jesus' precious name. Supply the need of this broadcast, Father, you know the heavy financial burden we carry, and I pray that you'll lead, guide, and direct in the finances of this broadcast. We ask it in Jesus' name, and for his glory we pray. Amen. The first few days of the broadcast this month, we talked about the child and the son. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And we talked about the child and the son. And we saw from the word of God that Jesus was very God in flesh. Then we talked about unto us a child is born, a son is given. And the government should be upon his shoulder, never has. The government never has been upon the shoulder of Jesus. But one sweet day, one glad day, the government will be upon his shoulder. So we talked about that. Now then, on the last broadcast, we talked about the name that is the part of the name, Wonderful. His name shall be called Wonderful. Now, I made the statement on the last broadcast that everything about Jesus was wonderful. He was wonderful in that he was in the beginning, in the everlasting ages. He was wonderful in that he took upon himself a body of flesh, like unto sinful flesh, like unto sinful flesh. And for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Wonderful. And then he was wonderfully born. He's the only person that was ever born of a virgin. There never shall be another one. He had the most wonderful birth this earth has ever known. Then he was a wonderful lad. He asked and answered the doctor's questions, and they were amazed at his wisdom. Then he was wonderful, beloved friends, as a teacher, as a healer, in death, in resurrection. And he's wonderful in that he's coming back to this earth again. Now today... I want us to take up the second phase of his name. Now notice, it did not say his names, plural. It did not say, and his names shall be called, but it is in the singular. His name, singular, his name shall be called wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, and so on. Now then today, the second part or the second phase of his name, and we'll talk about counselor. Now, what is a counselor? A counselor is one who counsels, an advisor. Now, what would Jesus advise if he were in the world today? Now, first of all, in John, in Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist came on the scene of action, crying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then he said, make the way straight. Because the king is coming. Now John was down at Jordan baptizing. And Jesus went down to Jordan to be baptized of John in Jordan. And John forbade him saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And Jesus had suffered to be so far. Thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Now let me say this. Lest somebody misunderstand. And of course I always get a few letters when I make this statement on the radio. And I'll get a few today that will be uh, uh, straightening me out. Of course, I always get a few. But now listen, Jesus was baptized and he said, Suffer it to be so, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. He said, John, I ought to be baptized to fulfill all righteousness. Now, Jesus needed baptism to fulfill all righteousness. He was the sinless, perfect son of God. He never sinned in thought, word, or deed. He was God in flesh. He was God's only begotten Son. And yet, he said, suffer it to be so, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Now then, Jesus was not baptized to save him or to help save him. He didn't need saving. He had never sinned. 
Baptism is for Christians, not sinners. Are you listening? Jesus did not need salvation. Jesus had no sins to wash away. Baptism does not wash away sins. Baptism does not save us, nor does it help save us. It is in obedience to his command, and it is an act of obedience to fulfill all righteousness. Now, baptism signifies that we've died to the world. We're buried with Christ in baptism in a watery grave, and we are raised to walk in newness of life. And so baptism doesn't have one single solitary thing to do with keeping a soul out of hell. Jesus was baptized and he said, John, suffer it to be so. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. I believe in baptism essential to obedience. I do not believe, nor does the Bible teach, baptism essential to salvation. Then, of course, there are others that say that you must be baptized in the name of Jesus. All right. If you're going to be baptized in the name of Jesus, remember, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, Counselor, Wonderful, Alpha, Omega, the Bread, the Water, the Light. Listen, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you're going to be immersed in the name of Jesus then, my friend, be sure that you call his full name. His full name. Yes, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, the way, the truth, the life, the alpha, the omega, the light, the bread, the water. See, the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star. Now, you call all of his name because all of those are parts of his precious name. Now, what is his counsel? He said to the disciples, he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to uh, to all people, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Baptized in the name Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Trinity. In other words, God is one God manifest in three distinct persons, that is, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. God the Father loved us. God was in the Son, reconciling the world unto himself. The Holy Ghost is in the world today, calling out a Gentile bride for Jesus Christ. So, when we baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, We are baptizing in the name of the great God manifest in three persons. All right. Now then, the counsel of Jesus concerning baptism is that it is to fulfill righteousness, not to become righteous, not to be saved, not to have anything to do with salvation. I believe you should be baptized. But let me say this. You cannot baptize a sinner. If you have not been baptized since you were born again, you have not had Christian baptism. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and then follow Christ in baptism. Baptism doesn't save you. Baptism has nothing to do with saving you. And baptism doesn't help save you. And baptism will not help you get into the kingdom of God. But it is in obedience to his precious command. Baptizing them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. That's the formula that Jesus counseled, or advised, or instructed the disciples to use. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Now, if you're going to use the name of Jesus, be sure and call it all. Now, don't say, I baptize you in Jesus' name. Because if you do, you're just giving part of it. Jesus, wonderful counselor, mighty God the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and so on. There's a score or even more parts in his precious name. Now then, after Jesus was baptized, the next counsel that he gave was to the devil himself in person. The devil tempted Jesus in all points as we are. And this is the way the devil was answered or counseled by Jesus Christ. Listen. Matthew 4, 1, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Verse 2, 
And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hunger. Jesus didn't eat for 40 days and 40 nights and he was hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Now, here is the counsel of Jesus. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, Jesus advises that man shall not live by bread alone. But did you know, did you know, that I am afraid that the uh, a good majority of the people today spend more time thinking about bread and milk and meat and clothes than they do thinking about God. Now listen, beloved. We must provide bread for our families. We must provide clothes for our families. We must provide the necessities of this life and of livelihood. But listen. While you are providing bread and meat and milk and clothes for your family and for yourself, remember Jesus advises, Jesus counsels, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. In other words, Jesus advises, Jesus counsels you to feed from the table of God while you are feeding upon this earth's bounties. When you eat bread to keep body and soul together, when you drink milk to feed that body of yours, when you eat of the necessities of the physical life, remember, if you are a wise man, you will feed that soul and spirit that lives within that body. Listen. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the word of God, and in his word doth he meditate day and night. The psalmist said, The word is sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. The word of God is bread. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. He said, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and they're dead. But he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And he that eateth this bread shall never die, never hunger. He said to the woman at the well, the water that I give you shall be in you a well of water, springing up in everlasting life. He said, you drink this water, you thirst again, but you drink the water that I give you and you'll never thirst. Now, here's what I'm saying. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. The ungodly says, eat, drink, and be merry. Tomorrow you die. Eat, drink, and be merry. Tomorrow you die. That's the advice. That is the counsel of the ungodly. But Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Blessed is the man that meditates in the word of God day and night. Pray without ceasing. That's the only way to stay ahead of the devil. And the reason why some of you precious church members have no more joy and no more happiness and no more peace and no more victory than you do, it's simply because you do not feed at God's table. You're careful to eat your breakfast in the morning and you're careful to have a sandwich and a glass of milk at the noon hour at least and then you're careful to have a well-rounded dinner in the evening. But say, how many minutes, how many minutes do you spend feeding at the table of God to keep your soul healthy and strong? Jesus advises that we do not try to live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Listen, Christian. How much Bible have you read this week? How many verses of Scripture have you read this week? Have you read your Bible yet today? Have you breathed a prayer to God yet today? Think it over. Think it over. You'll be eating the physical food that your body craves today. Why don't you feed on the things of God and keep that soul healthy? Why don't you read some Bible every day and have a time set aside for prayer? But now wait a minute. Verse 5. The devil taking them up into the holy city and set them on the pinnacle of the temple. And he saith, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, 
and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Now listen, beloved. God is able to deliver us and keep us under any and all circumstances. Now wait a minute and I'll tell you what I mean. God, Jesus, could have gone up on the top of that pinnacle, the steeple, on that temple, and he could have jumped off and it wouldn't have hurt him. But listen, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, did not come into this world to put on a show or to put on some spectacular uh, jump that he might uh, thrill the people and draw a crowd. Now, wait a minute. Listen, God expects us to use a little common sense with our religion. Now, Jesus advises, Jesus counsels, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. For instance, a Christian gets out here on the highway, drives 75 and 80 and 90 miles an hour, and somebody says, well, aren't you afraid? Oh, no, the Lord will take care of me. The Lord will take care of me. I'm his, and he'll take care of me. Listen, God expects you to use some common sense. A Christian goes out here in the middle of a terrible, terrible electrical storm and a terrible, terrible hurricane or tornado. And somebody says, aren't you afraid to go out? Oh, no, the Lord will take care of me. Listen, God can take care of you under any and all circumstances. But God expects you to use a little common sense. Use a little common sense. Now, I believe if I was way out on the mission field, way back in the jungles, on a mission for Jesus. If some kind of a poisonous snake bit me, I believe God could heal me and keep me from dying. Back there, away from the hospitals and the doctors and drugs, I believe if the most poisonous snake in the jungle should strike me, I believe God is able to heal me. I do. But if I get snake bit here at home, I believe God expects me to go to the hospital, go to a doctor. I certainly do. In other words, let me put it this way. I believe God expects us to do for ourselves what we can, and then when we do what we can, God will do what we cannot do. Now, I believe that. The Bible counsels us. The Bible advises us to tempt not the Lord. Tempt not. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. All right. Now then, the next thing the devil did, he said, now, if you'll fall down, listen, I'll read it. The devil taken them into an exceeding high mountain, verse 8, and showed him all the kings of the world. And he said, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil departed, and angels came and ministered unto Jesus. Now, listen, let me say this, and my time is gone. Jesus counsels us to worship God only. Worship God only. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. We are to have one master, and that master is God. We are to serve God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. That is the counsel that the wonderful counselor gives. Now, here it is. Listen, when we're washed in the blood, when we're born again, when we're saved by grace, we should follow Christ in baptism, in obedience to his command, not to be saved, not to help us be saved, but because we are saved. We should follow Jesus in baptism because we are a Christian. Now then, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We should not tempt the Lord God, and we should worship only God. Now, those are words of advice. Those are words of counsel given to us in the Bible from the wonderful counselor, the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you truthfully say today that you've been born again? Can you truthfully say that your sins are washed away? Then if you can, live for Jesus. Serve him with all of your heart. Read his word daily. Do not tempt him. Don't tempt him by the things you do or the things you say or the places you go. Don't tempt the Lord. And then remember, you're to worship him 
and him alone. So God to help us not to have any idols in our life, but God help us to serve the Lord Jesus with all of our heart every day that we live. Father, take this message today and use it to the glory of God. Save many precious souls, our Father, in the great unseen radio land. Save many fathers, save many, I pray. Then, Lord God, reclaim the backslidden and revive the indifferent and get glory to thyself. For Jesus' sake we ask it. Amen.